Nutrition for another installment of What's Your Life Like? Today we have Miss Sherry L. of Shea L. Boutique, Natural Hair Care Specialist. Thank you. First question for the audience is, have you always been natural? And if not, why did you decide to go natural? I have not always been natural or AKA what we say in 2020, textured. Um, my mom got me a relaxer when I was around eight or nine years old. And from nine to about 20, sophomore year in college, I was natural. I was relaxed, sorry. And I decided that I wanted to go natural in college, tried it out. And graduation came and I couldn't figure out how to get, get the dang on cap on my head because my fro was so big, so I relaxed my hair. Um, <laughs> so I relaxed it again in, in, 20, in 2009. And then in 2011, I decided I wanted to go back natural. And I've been natural ever since. So June is my anniversary. And so it is June 2020. So it's been nine years since I have returned back to Wakanda. Awesome. What is the biggest, what, sorry, what are the biggest inaccuracies when it comes to maintaining healthy, thick, natural hair? Well, I think one of the inaccuracies is that everybody's supposed to have thick hair, and that's not true. Um, you can only have what your genes give you, and you got to blame it on your parents and God for that one. So mm -hmm. you only, you, you have to work with what you have. So mm -hmm. I have type 4 hair. Um, somebody else may be biracial and they could have type two or type three. They could also have type four. So it's really dependent on what their genes give them. Um, one of the inaccuracies is that it's difficult, but anything can be dif difficult if you don't try. So you have to try and figure out what it is that your hair likes, not what you want it to like, but what your hair actually likes. And then you go from there. Okay. As an adult man in the world, Someone told me about 4C hair. Now, for me, I only thought 4C was breadcrumbs because, of course, I like food. So can you please explain to the audience that doesn't get it, what are the grades of hair? Does it start at 1 and go all the way to Z? How does that work? Okay. So <laughs> wonderful natural hair, textured hair um, gurus created a chart and it helps women and men, of course, because you guys have hair too, mm -hmm. to identify what texture they have. So it goes by curl patterns. Um, it starts at type one, which is Asian. You will never see an Asian with curly hair unless they do something to get it like that. Then you have type two, which is waves. You have type three, which is more so curls. And you have type four, which is the average black woman who is an, of African descent, which is kinks and coils. That's how we differentiate. Got it. Uh, let's go into some hair care questions. Okay. Are protective styles better with your natural hair or with the weave? Either one is good. Um, the bigger issue is that sometimes people forget that they have hair inside of the protective style. And the point of a protective style is to protect your ends because your ends are the most fragile and driest part of your hair strands. So get your protective style. This is a protective style. My hair is just pulled up in a ponytail and I got a pack of Cuban twists on top, wrapped around, no problem. Inside of it, my hair is braided, I oil it, I moisturize it, it's been in for a week and I do that every couple of days. The important part is that with any style that you put in that you're, you're planning to keep for longer than a week, you need to make sure that you moisturize and or oil your scalp. You don't need to put oil on your actual hair, but you need to oil your scalp and moisturize your strands. Um, the biggest issue is that people, like I said, forget that they have the hair inside of the protective style. And when they take down the style, their hair breaks and they have a lot of shedding. That's because your hair dried out. So at the end of the day, our hair needs moisture. So we don't create sebum like other races do. We have to put the oils in. So, but when you put the oils in, you don't want to clog your pores. So washing your hair, you know, ever so often is great. And you also have to make sure that you have to cleanse. Okay, so how often should someone wash their hair and how long should they keep the protective style in? Okay, I, on average, don't um, recommend my clients to go any longer than eight weeks if they don't absolutely have to. There are some circumstances like pregnancy, somebody, you know, they, they have a baby or maybe they have to travel out of town and they're a long distance, um, they're going to be gone for a while, then okay, 12 weeks max. After 12 weeks, take it out. I don't care if it's braids, sewing, crochet, whatever it is, do not keep it in longer than the 12 weeks. While you have your hair in that protective style, you need to make sure that you are cleansing your scalp. Your scalp does get dirty and it needs to be cleansed. How do you cleanse it? You need to make sure that you are using a clarifier. A clarifier is just something that cleans your scalp. 
that's it. Cleans your hair. It takes out all the gunk and the product and everything like that, especially if you're a wash and go type of girl. But you need to make sure that whatever kind of shampoo you're using, use a clarifying shampoo and follow it up with a moisturizing shampoo so that you can make sure your hair is cleansed and hydrated. Uh, sticking with the whole shampooing um, topic, do you need to pre-poo your hair and how often is it necessary? Pre-poo. You can pre-poo every time you actually shampoo your hair. Now, there's also such a thing called co-washing. Co-washing is literally just conditioner washing. Co does co-washing cleanse your scalp? Does it cleanse your hair? Absolutely not. It literally just rinses out what's in there. It does not cleanse. So if you have a lot of product buildup, let's say you do a lot of ponytails or you do wash and goes and you just kind of want your hair to feel better, then you can do a co-wash. But every two weeks, you definitely need to make sure that you are cleansing your scalp if your hair is free and clear. If you have it in braids or you may have it in a sewing, it might be a little difficult to get to your scalp with those type of styles in. But you can use a Q-tip, throw, throw some clarifying shampoo on a Q-tip, scrub it in there, get it around, and make sure that you're cleaning your hair. Are sulfates really bad for your hair? Yes, they dry your hair out. Okay, let's go with some hair trends, worth it or not. What about the rice water trend for long hair and fast growth? So the average strand grows a half an inch per month. That's about it. So unless you are a uh, super foodie and you're taking vitamins and you're taking these super, super dense um, supplements, your hair is going to grow only at a half an inch per month. So that is what you have. You have to work with what you have. Um, rice water, it's, it has ingredients in there that gives you the illusion that your hair is thicker, but your hair is not going to get any thicker than what your genes gave you. So it swells the hair strands, like I said, to give you illusion. But once you stop using the rice water, your hair will go back to what it was. Speaking of food, what do you think about the avocado trend? And what is the purpose of using food in your hair as opposed to commercial products with chemicals? Um, well, in reality, that's what our ancestors did. They didn't have the commercial products. They didn't have the chem they didn't have the chemistry. They didn't have the chemicals. So they used the berries and the juices that they found from Mother Nature, um, and that from they found from what they found from the earth, and they used it. I have no problem with it. Just know what you're doing. Not every fruit can go in your hair, and also if you're using fruit, you need to make sure that you're refrigerating it. Um, you got to work with what God gave you, and. There are certain things like honey is a humectant. Avocados are great to eat and great to use for your skin and also good for your hair. But not everybody can use the same thing. So you also have to take into consideration whether you have any kind of medical issues going on. Do you have a lot of stress in your life or do you have any chemical imbalances? All of those things have to be taken into consideration when you're using any kind of product. And also, if you're going to be using natural little foods, then you remember to refrigerate them and use them for at least 14 days, any product, commercial or natural, use them for 14 days. Now, if you use anything and you see an immediate negative reaction, do not put it back in your head. But if you are unsure and you just kind of want to test it out, keep going for 14 days and see how it works. Okay. For products, homemade, store-bought, or a combination of both? Just like I said, with the food, I don't have an issue with either. Just know what works for you and make sure you ask questions. YouTube University is free, but you also need to make sure that the people that you are going to look on YouTube resemble the type of hair and the texture that you have. Not everything that somebody is going to recommend is going to work for you. So be patient. Your hair is like a plant. You don't want to do too much because if you do too much, you will kill it. So <laughs> don't oversaturate. Don't oversaturate your hair. Be mindful of what it is that you're putting in your hair. Be consistent with your regimen and your hair will your hair will will give you the fruition that you're looking for. Okay. As for um, products that you use, um, my question is, what do you use personally and or on your own clients? Okay, so my products that I use are professional, so you're not going to be able to get them in the store. But I do recommend um, a few brands to my clients, depending on their texture. I personally love Curls Dynasty. It is a black-owned natural hair care brand. Absolutely love it. Um, I also like Camille Rose. I also like um, Mio Organics and um, Eden Body Works. Those are the four brands that I personally recommend. And depending on the texture, like I said, they may or may not work, but you have to just try them out. Got you. 
How long have you been a beautician at this point? Well, post-graduation, um, I was in child welfare for seven years. So I was a case manager with the state of Florida, and I quit in 2016. I went to cosmetology school. I finished and graduated, and I have been in the hair industry working as a professional since 2017. Awesome. So if the audience would like to get in contact with you, well, we know obviously you're in Florida because I'm down here in Miami. Hey! But, um, <laughs> What is your what are your social handles? Okay, so my professional Instagram and Twitter is Shayel Boutique, as you can see right here. It is S H A Y E L L E Capital B E A U T I Q. My personal Instagram and Twitter is Miss Shari L, which is M I S S S H A R I E L L E. You can also DM me on either platform. Um, my YouTube is also Miss Shari L. And if you have any questions, any hair questions, you can, like I said, you can DM me on any of those platforms or you can send an email to shellbutique at gmail.com. And once again, she's located in Tamarack. Sorry if I wasn't clear on that. I am located in Tamarack, <laughs> right on the cusp of university and commercial. But if you have any hair questions, I have no problem. Send me a DM and I can hopefully help you out. All right. Once again, thank you for letting us know what your life is like, nutrition, and we're out. Hey.